Are you giving candy again this year for Valentine's Day? Get creative, man. That's what shows women you care. This year, get her Georgia's famous baklava. It's Osborne approved. Walnut baklava with 50 layers of melt-in-your-mouth phyllo. All of the ingredients are premium and all natural. That's why it tastes so good. Shipped in a special container, priority mail, so it gets to you fresh and delicious. Order by February 10th to make sure you have it in time for Valentine's Day at mandrik.com. M-A-N-D-R-I-K.com. No C in there. Mandrik.com. This is Russell Canning of Grafton. Yes, I know. I've been talking a lot about secession lately, especially when you consider that I'm technically not in favor of it. New Hampshire secession. But why wait until everyone's talking about it? As I talk about it now in December uh, 2010, it's still considered crazy talk. But the point I want to drive home tonight is that historically, secession has a way of appearing on the table out of nowhere. These uh, cement blockades were put there to protect the feds from us. So we're filling them in with snow. People who are steadfastly against secession can turn in favor of it very quickly. Take early 90s Bosnia, for example, which was part of the Yugoslav Federal Republic. If I recall correctly, a huge majority of Bosnians were in favor of staying inside Yugoslavia. They didn't want it to crack up. But by 1992, there was a dramatic change of opinion. What changed? Several things, some of which are changing the same way in America now. First, there was a hyperinflationary situation in the region, although I don't know the exact timeline on that. There was a collapse of the central government system crazy overbuilding of useless projects which were being abandoned in droves. There were other states inside Yugoslavia that were moving towards secession. When Slovenia and Croatia did secede in 1991, the central government's reaction was excessive and cruel. The scenes of carnage in eastern Croatia had a dramatic effect on opinion in Bosnia. No side in the conflict was destined to have a monopoly on sadism. But by the time this man's bodyguards opened fire on demonstrators from the rooftop of the Sarajevo Holiday Inn, the Bosnian drive toward independence was almost unstoppable. His name is Radovan Karadzic, and he was the leader of the pro-Yugoslav faction in Bosnia. Now, some of these types of abuses have not transpired in exactly the same way yet inside the United States. But the number of civilians killed by the United States government over the last 20 years is comparable to the number killed by Karadzic in the Yugoslav Federal Army. The spectacular outrages committed by pro-Yugoslav forces around Bosnia were no more outrageous than the things Washington has been doing for the last few years spreading radioactive particles over occupied territories, attempting to charge Australian citizens living outside the United States, and suspected of no violence against Americans. Legalizing and imposing sexual assaults against children in plain view of the public, some of these crimes even the Yugoslav government probably didn't consider. The point is, America now has a Yugoslavia-style situation on its hands. Washington has become very similar to the Yugoslav capital, Belgrade. But there's one big exception to this analogy. Even Belgrade was never stupid enough to try and maintain an overseas empire. Or do much outside the original borders of Yugoslavia.